Welcome to the Make It Happen with Will Polston podcast. These podcast episodes with Will and his guests provide you with insights on how you can transform your excuses into results to benefit yourself, your family, your friends, your community, society, humanity, and the universe with what Will calls the ripple effect. Will's mission is to empower one billion people via the ripple effect and intends that you'll become another person to add to the count, having listened to this episode. Hello and welcome to Make It Happen with Will Polston. I'm Will Polston. This is episode number 96. And in this episode, I'm joined by Mark Victor Hansen, and we're going to be talking about Ask, the bridge from your dreams to your destiny. Mark Victor Hansen is best known as the co-author for the Chicken Soup for the Soul book series and brand, setting world records in book sales with over 500 million books sold. Mark also worked his way into a worldwide spotlight as a sought-after keynote speaker and entrepreneurial marketing maven, creating a stream of successful people who have created massive success for themselves through Mark's unique teachings and wisdom. With his endearing, charismatic style, Mark captures his audience's attention as well as their hearts. Having spoken to over 6,000 audiences worldwide with his one-of-a-kind technique and masterful authority of his work, time and time again he continues to receive high accolades from his audiences as one of the most dynamic and compelling speakers and leaders of our time. Mark and his beautiful wife, Crystal Dwyer Hansen, have co-written their newest book, Ask the Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny, which we're going to be talking about in this episode. So, Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Will. I'm excited. It, it, like I said to you a second ago, it's just so exciting that we're literally oceans away from each other and have instantaneous communication. It's clear. Only only in, in this time, this age, can we do that. It's It really is incredible. And and, and I personally find it fascinating that we, we can be able to do this, like you say, it, and, and, and what's even better about it is we're going to have a great conversation, but the people that are going to be able to listen to this and hear this or watch this on YouTube um, when, when we release it is, is, is even better. So really looking forward to that. So most people, Mark, they, they know you because of this very famous book. Um, so for those of you that are listening, I'm holding it up right now, the, the, the Chicken Soup for the Soul. You've got the original one there, which across the various different variations i know there's lots of lots of them over 500 million of these books have been sold which to uh, to put into perspective for people that's all the, the same amount of books as the harry potter series you know which is which is an incredible incredible feat and it's it's a an incredible um uh it had an incredible impact on people i mean if you haven't read it go and get it um it, it really is a a, a classic but one of the things that I'm always fascinated with people that have gone on to achieve great things, whether it's in the personal development space or outside of it, whatever it may be, is w- what is it that has driven that? What, what was at the root? What was it that made you think, you know what, I'm going to create and pull together 101 stories to open the heart and rekindle the spirit and as, as sort of giving you this, um, this, this drive and intention to want to impact people in the way that you have? For some reason, I feel like being silly and saying it's because of my wisdom and my great writing, but that isn't it. What happens is that Jack and I, Dr. Jack Canfield and I got together uh, back in the late 80s and, and uh, he came to one of my talks and my God, you're the best storyteller I've ever heard. And we started putting the stories together. We decided to do it. Uh, we meditated on the best title. We kept going mega best selling title, mega best selling title, mega best selling title. And before cell phones existed, he called me at like 2.58 in the morning, woke up all the my family, my uh, house, and my daughter was becoming a veterinarian and 88 animals on one acre and said, chicken soup. And I said, for the soul. And we got it. We got goosebumps, which we think God bumps, goosebumps, chili bumps, and then seven other demarcations like instantaneous behavioral change are what make a book a bestseller. And, and then we said, well, wait a second, we'll do it three minutes or less. So it's a perfect read before you go to sleep at night or before while you're sitting in a restroom or what you call WC. Um, and, and then 144 publishers all said, hit the road, Jack. And I said, look, it's okay if you don't like Jack, but I am a really nice guy. No, Jack, <laughs> Jack is, I, I told you, I'm in a silly mood today because I've been so productive and I know we're at a different time and all that. Um, Jack's brilliant and wonderful and wise and, and my best friend. So that I'm just teasing, of course. Uh, so th- we started selling it and we did bypass marketing to make sure it got to everyone because every author is told a story 
um, by publishers, and I'm with seven houses right now, but because um, I've been prolific and written 318 books, but they all say, well, you go on this 20 city tour and you go to all the biggest bookstores and you do all the media and then you're done. And no, no, that, that isn't it. You gotta be persistent, consistent, insistent and, and stay in there. You know, we've been selling this 20 years on, like we sold a half billion, but my goal is, was in the beginning and that's what scared the publishers off. I wrote the business plan because I'm the sales marketing of the Mark and Jack team. Not that I, I don't love to write and, and I'm really pretty good at it. Uh, I got many critics. When you're the biggest, you get critics. So does Rawlings. <laughs> and I love her stuff. And so do my kids and grandkids. But I wrote that we're going to sell a billion books. Well, understand if you're a publisher that nobody has ever anywhere, anytime, any place sold a billion books, they go, uh, I'm not so sure, Will. You might have a lot of will in will, but I don't think the willpower is enough to get the sales power. Well, I still believe it. And and uh, no one's ever done it before. And I'll just do one final line in this. And that is Amazon had me on a bestseller uh, interview with uh, Mark Devereaux, who's a lovely human being. And he says, his opening line was, Mark Victor Hansen, you are the Roger Bannister of books. Now you're in the UK, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. You remember who you remember Roger Bannister? I, I most certainly do. Four Minute Mile back and in 1953, I think. Yeah, 6th of May, if I remember correctly. I don't know about that. But it, when he ran it, everyone said, well, he was a medical doctor. And if you run a four minute mile, your heart will jump out of your chest. You'll be a dead person. And what? And I said to Devereaux, I said, Mark, do you know what happened the next week? He said, no idea. I said, next week, 119 people did it. But before that, we had a mental ceiling. I said, physiologically, anatomically, we're no different. But that one guy broke the ceiling. He said, so what does that mean? I said, I broke the ceiling. There are going to be a lot of people that do. He said, oh, come on, come on. How, why do you believe that? I said, look, three years ago, there's no such thing as a trillion dollar company. Now, you you guys do di numbers different in the UK than we do in America. But for us, a thousand, thousands, a million, a thousand, millions, a billion, a thousand, billions, a trillion. Just go with me for a second. We had, we had one trillion dollar company now we got five trillion dollar companies and we got two two trillion dollar companies he said oh my god i never looked at it that way i said so i appreciate your acknowledgement but i want to break through for everybody and i want to break through <clears throat> i said this is going to be shorter and i'm sorry if i'm over waxing here but we have four billion people on the planet that can't read whatever language they're in and when britain was an empire they went i lived in india <clears throat> I was a student ambassador in India. They thought I was smart. Anyhow, um, and I thought everybody spoke English in India. I can tell you unequivocally there's 645 languages in India. Did you know that, Will? I did not know that, no. Yeah, languages like Telugu and Canada, languages you've never heard about, don't care about. You've heard Hindi or do, and you've got a lot of Indians in, everywhere in the UK, and God bless them. I'm, I love India but, and Indians, and, and we love England. We need to open up the whole world again. Did I over answer your question? No, I, I think so. What, what, what I what I really take from this, and, and this is something that I, I, I personally work with a lot of my clients to do, which is to open up the possibility of their potential. And a lot of people that listen to our our, our show here, they're, they're people that, that, that they're searching for that new way of thinking or that new way of acting that's going to create limitless well they've already got limitless limitless possibilities but change the maybe the contaminated thinking that's preventing it from from being achieved but i suppose what, what i'm still interested in if we could go the step back before that because it's fascinating to hear it and, and and very inspiring to hear it um is but e even before then when you were doing your seminars what what was it that one day because i can't imagine that you went to school and was was six years old and, and saying right when I grow up I want to become a, a coach a teacher of personal development professional development and, and go on and write books so what what was the moment for you where 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 that that inspiration came in well a great question thank you for that um my parents were Danish immigrants came uh from Denmark to America when my dad was 14 his older brother 14 years older created the black man took all the Jews into Denmark and, and said to my dad, Uncle Sven said to my dad, Paul, um, here's a hundred dollar bill and a passport. A hundred dollar bill was like a thousand said, you're out of here. Hitler wants to kill everybody in the family because of me and goodbye. I'll never see you again. Kissed his two cheeks and said, look, I love you little brother, but bye bye. And my dad um, came to America. And, and so we never had books in our house because he was hardworking, 
said, if I got a roof over your head, you guys are doing well. And then all of a sudden I'm a sophomore in English uh, and honors English with uh, John Reinhardt. And I love this guy. This guy made books alive. He was a thespian. He was, and he, you know, he let us come to his house with he and his wife and his wife said, you know, Mark, uh, Mr. Reinhardt would have books in the ceiling if he could figure out how to glue them in and they wouldn't fall out. That's how much he loved books. And he had me fall in love with books. And then I said, well, I'd like to write. And then all of a sudden I'm in graduate school and I'm going to jump topics here, but I get with the world's smartest guy, Buckminster Fuller, who had written 40 books, invented geodesic domes and thousands of other things. Einstein's best student. And Fuller said, we can make the world work for 100% of humanity. And I said, wow, I want to do that. And I tried to be him, screwed that up and then went bankrupt and then said, well, what I really want to do is I want to talk to people that care about things that matter, that would make a life changing difference. And then somebody came to me out of the audience and said, you know, you, you've got to have that in. A, your stories are so good. You've got to put it in a book. So I'm doing a little audience of six people, 10 people, 20 people. And, and our first book I did was Stand Up, Speak Out and Win. And we sold 20,000 copies at $10 each, made $200,000 after going bankrupt for $2 million. And I thought, oh my God, I have died and gone to heaven. I, how could it get better than this? And since then I've written 318 books and somebody said, what's your legacy? And I said, I, I don't know. I'm gonna live be 127 with options for a no because you live as long as you expect to live. So. The law of spirit says you got to put it in writing, make a thing. The Bible says, write a thing, make it clear. It'll be established on you. So I said, well, good. I'm going to live to be 127 because I'm going to have a high quality life. I've got the best life I know of, high quantity of life with the greatest wife in the world and, you know, five kids, six grandkids and, and exceedingly productive and still a lot of vacation and playtime. So and been everywhere, but I still want to go back. How's that? I love it. Absolutely love it. I, I find it fascinating. The, the, a, a lot of great people like yourself we hear about the great accomplishments but for what, what i've always found incredible is the the journey that they've been on you know for you even that the, go, going through i mean what was the set the, the old japanese proverb um it's always darkest just before dawn and you had that bankruptcy and then that first book which has gone on to 300 plus more being written thereafter i i, I love it absolutely love it um Thanks. so I, I suppose that's a, a really great time to talk about sort of that that bridge into that is the, you've now got this new book which you've written with your your incredible wife um crystal um called ask and the, the book's subtitle is there's the book yep for everyone watching on youtube a bridge from your dreams to destiny and what, what i love about this book having having gone through it is the you, you refer to it actually, and 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 it's one of the things that I'm, I'm I'm quite a logical guy. I'm quite a pragmatic guy, and one of the things that you refer to it as as a is a science. And whilst I think that the art and science are two things that are very important to be able to create whatever it is you want to create, especially when it comes to success and 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 sort of living your dreams. For me, the science is: can it be replicable? Like, what are the processes you need to follow? And in the the three parts in the book, which you you have, have put together beautifully with your wife, um, yeah. there's some some really incredible. Um, yeah, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it in more, in more detail. But what what was it that that prompted you to to write this book? I mean, three hundred plus other books, but but why ask? Well, first of all, I think. I got three answers. Number one is that my wife and I have traveled to 80 countries so far around the world. I want to go to all 228 before I pass on um, when it's safe and all that good stuff. But uh, we've met great people, wonderful people. Talked to 7 million people, which is some sort of record, I guess. We always educated, sophisticated, delightful people. But the difference we saw between somebody who succeeds a little and somebody who had vast success is one thing only. They know how to ASK to GET what they want. And once they ask, they start going towards their destiny. And what we said is, wow, what if that's true? Everyone's got a destiny and it's hidden inside. Now, spiritually, Christ said, you know, ask and you shall receive. But he didn't detail how to do that. And mm -hmm. so we said, well, wait a second. If everyone has a destiny, let's make it so simple. Nobody can miss it. But, it's, you know, and that's why we want to read the book. But we said, you got to ask yourself, ask others and ask God. Those are the three channels. And, and the real, there, it, it's so simple, you'd say, well, I know that already. No, unless you've got it detailed, then what's happened is we've all suffered COVID confinement cocoon. And you guys, are, you're still, are you allowed to? Yeah, we, 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 we've kind of got some um, some freedom, let's say now. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's still different. 
it's still different. Yeah, in you in Australia and a few other places. So what I'm saying is, hey, look, we didn't know, like when Jack and I wrote Chicken Soup, we wrote it because we knew the soul of the America was in trouble. Now, what we discovered was the soul of the world's in trouble. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. why we sold so many books. And, and so, right, and, and you as a speaker, writer, thinker, podcaster, uh, thought leader, I'm asking you to look at the pain points, and the pain points on the planet are bigger than they've ever been, right? So one of the last question we have in the book, and I'm jumping way ahead, and then I'll go back to the question, is that we got Peter DeMand, Dr. Mandis, and I know each other pretty well. He's a double doc, MD, Harvard, PhD, uh, MIT. But he says, look, every one of us that's in a think place like this seminar of yours and, and this podcast we're doing, you got to ask yourself, what am I personally going to do during this decade to positively affect 1 billion people? That's 1,000 million people. What are you going to do? And I'm going to positively affect them with my books, but I also own an energy uh, device company called naturalpowerconcepts.com. Everybody can go there, look it up, watch all our videos, and you go, holy cow, this guy's really a critical person because every one of us, because I love what you're doing in this podcast to make it happen. Every one of us is here to make something happen. Now, let's do the opposite. When somebody isn't being who they're supposed to be, doing what they're supposed to do and having what they're supposed to have, they get despondent, depressed, disconsolate, and this depression goes to suicide. Like I had a friend this last week commit suicide. Now, if he called me, I think I could have talked him out of it. Mm -hmm. Second, a little girl writes me. We have Girl Scouts is a big thing, and obviously I've got a lot of daughters and granddaughters. And all of them are Girl Scouts and, and boys, Boy Scouts are the equivalent. And uh, she writes and says, look, I'm getting the Golden <clears throat> Award in Girl Scouts. And I'm 12 years old, Mr. Hampson, uh, or Dr. Hampson, whatever you are. And, and I'm, I, I need you to tell me how we can get Girl Scouts to be passionately on purpose so they don't commit suicide, because suicide's going nuts. Well, look at that. I got, <laughs> you see the hair on my arm go up, because I'm by the way, this pisses me off, and and I, I don't. I'm not supposed to use that term, and I know that. But no one should be, especially a 12 year old, even considering something like that. But they need to have a passionate purpose that's bigger than they are, that is going towards one thing, their destiny. Because if you believe you got a destiny and you're nodding your head, and some of you that are listening and not and not able to watch us on on audio, and and as this propagates out. I really want you to get from my soul to your soul through will soul that, that w if you are using your soul and you're alive and I don't care your chronology as little as a little girl scout and, and even younger to somebody, I wrote a book with Art Lindler when he was 98. So I, this whole spectrum, you know, needs to get done. And everyone, if you're alive, you've got something to do. You've got a destiny to fulfill. I don't necessarily know what it is, but Chris and I, think our destiny with this book is to help you get to your destiny. And we're saying, hey, look, get a copy of the book. And, and universally, you can get it at Amazon worldwide, with the exception of China, I guess. And, and get a copy of the book and go over every question with somebody significant to you, your spouse, spouse equivalent, church mate, temple mate, ashram, whatever, whoever it is, business partner, mastermind partner, and go over the questions to find out what your destiny is. And I say that because I said the three parts to this. All of us are over endowed with mind power, but if you don't use your mind power towards something great, your mind power involutes rather than evolutes. You blame rather than learn, and you work against yourself. And you do want to, like my friend who hung himself, and, and I heard how awful it was, but let me do the good news of that. His best friend called me, and while I was spinning for an hour this morning, took me through the gory details. But the good news is, he had listened to my seminar and I said, Hey, look, if you're healthy, you got give away all your body parts, give away all your blood because somebody's going to die if they don't get the nine pints of blood you got. He did everything. He gave away all eight parts of his body, his lungs, his heart, his, because he was, when he hung himself, he didn't die and instantly. His heart kept beating, although he was brain dead. So they kept him alive. And then they even, I didn't know this part. And if I'm going, it's too gory. I apologize. But he gave skin to a thousand people because he listened to my seminar and said, when you die, somebody needs what you got you don't die spiritually you only die physically right and if it doesn't violate your spiritual belief system i believe you got to give all your body parts away because i wrote a book called the miracle of tithing as you know or people say what's that miracle of giving 
and and I I've done that right and and uh, have I gone too far? Is that helpful? No, no. I, I think I, and there's, there's some questions that I'm going to ask about this, and, and sure. we, we can we can we can sort of bit build into it. And I, I think that um, like even even just what you you've said there, like in in that very short period of time, a, a friend of yours, you've had that terrible news. You, you instantly you've been able to see i mean you've been doing this for decades right but you've been able to see the positives in the situation and be able to 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 flip it not in a way that means that you are um denying it emotionally and you're trying to bury it and just blindside what's going on but you've you've been able to see it in a light that is is empowering and and, and enabling you to be grateful for, for for the situation in terms of where you're at right now not only that, let me go deeper. And I've not done this on any show before, and it's a little heavy on me. And I hope it's not too heavy on the listeners. And if it is, I apologize to anyone I've besmirched. And but my friend, you know, when when somebody dies, if you saw the movie Coco, which we had to see with our grandkids, which is a great movie, but it shows, you know, when you go to heaven, there's the streets of gold, but it actually shows the gold as gold leaf, and it floats. And I thought, wow, that's a cool picture of those. And I don't know what it's like because I haven't, you know, chronologically, I'm still alive. So. And, I, and we got an amnesia when we come into life, as you know, spirits have been alive forever. So um, but the other thing they said in that movie, which I'd never thought of before, is that when one of your peers or relatives die, you're supposed to pray for them to release them out of being locked onto the earth plane, which is very dense. Now, I may be, again, going too far, and, and but you said you wanted a thoughtful conversation, and this is about as current as I am. So obviously, I won't mention this guy's name, but I've obviously physically released him. So there's good things that are happening. I mean, other people are gonna live because they got his heart. Other people get got his eyes, you know, so they get mm -hmm. to see he, nine pints of blood. I, I was a spokesperson for the Red Cross and every pint of blood saves three lives immediately. And then I can go deeper on that, but it's really exciting that, you know, even in transition out of physical form, we can go do a whole lot of good. That, because I believe the question is how much good can you do in a human lifetime, because I keep getting asked, what's my legacy? Like, I'm going to die tomorrow. And I already told you, I'm going to live to be 127. I'm only 73. So I got a long ways to go. I got a lot to do. And, and it's all, I got 7,000 goals in writing because most people, oh, I, goals for me is what am I going to do after lunch? No, 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 no. <laughs> Look, Bubba, that isn't it. You missed the program. What are you really going to do with your life? Love it. I've, I've got to ask the question now before we go on. So you, you mentioned sure. Peter Diamandis um, before. I, I love Peter. I've, I've actually, um, I've, I've got a, an interview with um, uh, someone he's just written a book with more recently, The Future's Faster Than You Think, Stephen Kotler in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, I would love to get his phone number for me when we're done. We'll talk for a few We'll seconds. speak separately and uh, we'll, we'll sort that, no problem. But um, yeah, I, uh, I, I in, in terms of Peter, I've been, I've been part of Abundance Digital and, and some of the stuff that he's doing there. And one of the things that I have, I, I say to people all the time, they say, well, wh how, what age are you going to live to, right? And most people go, ah, 80, 90, if I have a good run. I'm like, I'm living to 150. And people think that I'm crazy, but it's because of, I've got a little bit more of an understanding of sort of the human genome, epigenetics, some of the advances that are coming out. I'm a big fan of um, with, with what um, Elon Musk is doing, with um, Neuralink, I think it's called, um, and, and lots of different things. But you mentioned 127, which is pretty precise. So I, I'm, I've got to ask the question, why 127? Well, the Bible says in Genesis 6, 3, you can go back and you shall have 120 years. Now, if that's average, I don't ever want to be average. There's no part. By the way, I was <laughs> below average and I've come from, you know, everyone. If you go back to my elementary school, everyone says, well, we're all smarter than Mark. He was such a dumbass. He was in remedial reading from first grade to sixth grade. Now, I didn't know that that was a benefaction. I knew I was being called going to the slow class, but one of our daughters teaches special education. Now she is so good, like that little white haired lady I had, who I, I'm sorry, I've lost her name over my lifetime, but our little daughter finds out of 15 kids she has in the morning and 15 in the afternoon, she's found four in each class that are Asperger's positive, sort of like Bill Gates and, and, and you know, let's talk about the people that are Asperger's, Bill Gates, Richard Branson, who is a dear friend of mine, Elon Musk, and all of them go like this all the damn time, right? Because they're Asperger's positive. But the average person looks at somebody like that and they go, I don't know, is it cuckoo brain or whatever they call them and besmirch them. And even the parents don't know what to do unless they go with somebody great like our daughter, Kelly. And, and Kelly says, look, I'm dad, I'm bringing out, and, and mom, I'm bringing out 
everything that you guys have taught and believed. And, and my mother, my wife, her mother went to the classroom because we're ready to start school here in a couple of days again, which is crazy because I live in Arizona and it's 121 degrees outside. And we have to start school next week. But, but she's got the class all set up to find the magnificence in every kid. And, and I'm, I know I'm going too far here, but here's the magnificence. The school system set up in Cambridge originally as university, started as university and then went back to biology and chemistry and screwed the whole deal up. They don't study universe anymore. And they don't also, when we're doing IQ tests, we're not testing enough. And I won the Horatio Algier Award, which means I came from rags to riches. I've been a little excessively philanthropic, but 10 of us win it. We get a gold medal in the US Supreme Court with Judge Clarence Thomas every year. And we got to go back and we've helped 25,000 at-risk kids get to go to school. That's not important, except to say two winners got kicked out of school, both of them will, when they were 13. This is critical. First is Quincy Jones. Now, he made a guy named Michael mm -hmm. Jackson. Whether you like his music or not is not the point. The other guy that got kicked out of school is David Foster, who found Barbara Streisand, Quincy, jo uh, sorry, found Barbara Streisand, found um, Whitney Houston, found uh, Celine Dion. And do you understand what I'm saying is yeah, 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 yeah. School, if you are my student and I'm your professor or teacher or educator or administrator, I can't hold up a mirror and see what your real talents are necessarily if, if we're limited to STEM, which I love. And I, I think STEM is great. Science, education, math, technology. And, and I teach all the astronaut kids, you know, communication and persuasion free because I'm part of Back to Space. And I hope I'm not going too far, but I want you to understand this system if, if it's 360 degrees of potential, orchestration like those two guys do, and I, we're very close friends with David Foster and, and Quincy, and I'm not as close with Quincy. How the hell do you know if somebody could orchestrate the greatest mm -hmm. music of the spheres that would last forever? And you will call that genius because those guys, for them, it's effortless ease. But if, if somebody hadn't given them a piano when they learned or, or Quincy hadn't got to work for uh, Ray Charles, they, the world would have missed out because everyone's got to have be a mentor mentee and, and it goes both ways. I got a hand up trying to reach higher and I got a hand out, which is shows like this, trying to bring everybody up. If, if I can be of influence, because Psalm 72 said your job in life, the smartest, richest guy with $4 trillion, that's though the T Solomon said, your job is to be an influencer of influencers. Well, that's, you know, I, I'm considered a senior, although I still feel like I'm a 28 year old body because I exercise every day, I eat right. I study all the same stuff you do with Demandus and, and his partner Cutler and, and Demandus' other partner, Ray, Dr. Ray Kurzweil, we just did a program a while together. And he wrote the book and I read it, How to, if you live long enough, you can live forever. So we're in a brand new and exciting time. We, we are indeed. I, I, I'm smiling here. People, people are listening to this on on YouTube. I've got a beaming smile. One of the things you said about reaching up and reaching out. I, there's a there's a game. I'm sure you got it in the states as well called Barrel Monkeys, and you have the little monkeys and you you sort of try and pick up as many as you can. I always say that we're like monkeys. We got one monkey above us, one monkey below us, and every time we sort of move up the chain, we're just moving other monkeys up. And uh, I, I think it's a uh, it's, it's very interesting how you, you both think the same there. But on that note, um, I, I've, I, I want to bring this back to Ask because it's a phenomenal book and, and and it's just come out and I really want to make sure that our listeners become aware of it and then they go and get it and read it in full. But Thank you, 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 you start the book with this most incredible parable uh, about a, a girl called Michaela. And what, what I love about this, so for people that listen to our podcast regularly know that my mission within my lifetime is to impact a billion people to achieve more than they ever thought possible by mastering their mindset, productivity and efficiency, right? And um, that, that, that's kind of my, my, my personal mission of, of what I'm on. And we do that in a, a variety of different ways. And what, what I talk about, and I, I say very openly, like I'm not naive enough to think I'm going to work with a billion people directly. But what I do believe is that by me achieving my full potential, that can, and, and, and enabling my clients to achieve their full potential and the people that we do have direct influence with, they can then benefit their family, their friends, their community, society, humanity, the universe. And that's what I call the ripple effects. And I talk a lot about the ripple effects. And this beautiful parable, which I don't know if we're going to ruin if you try and summarize it really quickly, um, but talks about the, the most incredible unfolding of a, a girl that uses her skill um, 
to impact one other people, one other person, sorry, that then goes on to, to ripple uh, uh, incredibly. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you, you're able to, to touch on that in, in a way which doesn't maybe ruin the full story. It's a long, great parable, but I, I thought it was important to touch upon. And maybe what, what was it that influenced you and, and Crystal to, to put that parable together? Well, first of all, thank you for loving it. Uh, the Fable of Michaela, my wife and I, when we started writing this book, she's got a lot of bestsellers herself, so it's not a question of, uh, but we were going to write it, and I was going to write a page, she was going to write a page, and we would just go back and forth. Well, all of a sudden, she has these profound dreams, prophetic dreams. Now, some people out there are going, I don't dream at all, and I don't know what a dream is, but, you know, all spiritual literature has got profound dreams. I mean, if you read The Alchemist, it's got profound dreams. You're talking about the monkey, and, and Ken Kaiser's work is that when a monkey's on one island, all ate and washed her sweet potatoes, suddenly every other island knew how to do it because they telepathed it. I'm going to use the word telepathy, and if somebody doesn't know it, they can go look it up. Uh, the point is, Crystal started writing that, and, and we're going to do it in four parts of the book. And I said, sweetie, this is so profound. We're going to, I got three Guinness Book of Records, you know, for selling more books than anybody, number one more than anybody, all that. But I said, this is going to be the first Guinness Book of Records for the longest prologue in any book ever in history. Because the prologue is usually a couple of paragraphs and maybe a page, and this is like 40 pages, but it, it is engulfing you in a story of a little girl that's had, it, in a time of kings and queens, which can relate better in Europe than anywhere, because we don't have kings and queens here, although I guess we do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, it, it, all of a sudden, I'm flashing. Sorry. Uh, the, the point is, it, it, her parents lost her parents. She's in a rock quarry. She's having everything go wrong, and all of a sudden, this light being being shows up and says you know let's talk about this and and i don't want to over distill it but she starts teaching others to read and her life transforms because what i my cliche is to be freed you've got to read and and some people so and, you know so jim rowan said if you can read and don't you're no better than somebody who can't read well it's tragic and and then i'm going to do one more thing on that and i'll stay in the fable but is, is that we got to get everybody to be able to be read to freed. And, and, you know, if you can't get an academic education, you can create immense value in yourself going toward your destination. If you read the kind of books I write and you write called self help action books, which is a zone that is not very old. And it did start in London with guys like James Allen and that as a man thinketh. So we're in this wonderful time when all that stuff's available for the first time. And, and, and the COVID has forced us inside so more books are selling than ever before. And what this woman does is read and starts waking up everybody. So when they read, their self-esteem goes up, their self-confidence goes up, their self-image goes up. And I'm going to jump through the story, but it's because we, we both had, obviously, I grew up Hans Christian Andersen fables, right? The ugly duckling. So she's essentially the ugly duckling that becomes, you know, we find out that she's way great and beautiful, but she was misnamed, misnomered. And that's what happens to each and every one of us. And the beauty of this fable is that people suspend their disbelief, get into the story, which by the way, we've got somebody on Wednesday that says they're gonna make it into a movie that's really a giant movie maker, which was our dream. Because we want everyone to catch on to the fable of Michaela, because it's not a fable set in time. It's a fable for right here, right now, to break everyone free again. So we all get to, understand our full potential and a full potential of, of experiencing the whole earth at its highest and best and most noble. And then we make the whole planet beautiful, wonderful, and live in truth and beauty and, and accelerate. How's that? Uh, I, I think you've, you've summarized it very well. And a lot of people are thinking they need to, having just had that little teaser, they need to now go and, and get the book for that, that first 40 pages. Um, but but go, go, let, let's sort of expand on that, because like I said, there's, there's three parts to the book. You've already mentioned this about asking, asking yourself, asking others, asking God. I personally, I, I, I say, which I, I quote from um, uh, Keith Cunningham, actually, that any problem is simply an unasked or unanswered question. And the quality of the arts, the quality of the questions that we ask ourselves will depend on the quality of the answers that we get, which, again, you, you refer to in the book. But you, you, you also talk about the, the things, the three main things in, in, in sort of both of your opinion that prevent people from achieving their dreams and, and, and turning their dreams into their destiny, which is fear, unworthiness and lack of awareness. And. The, the book helps people to 
to go through and, and, and change this and enable these hidden dreams to be discovered and to be able to live this fulfilled life. And as you put it, which I think is, is so true, is that everybody has this, um, this dream within them, which is their gift. It's their gift to the world that they're able to give other people, which you, you, you articulate beautifully in the, the story of Michaela. Um, but if, if we can talk about the, the, the roadblocks, if you talk about the seven roadblocks to, um, to, to people asking, like, what is it that stops people from asking the questions and preventing them from uh, gaining these new insights, which gives them the awareness, the worthiness and, and overcomes the fear? Well said. Uh, the seven roadblocks, which all of us have, all of us have some of them some of the time and all of them some of the time. And very few of us get rid of all of them any of the time, <laughs> which I'm not making fun of you, me, or anyone, but we've all gone through it. So we're sort of expert in it, but the, it starts with a sense of unworthiness, which goes to doubt and, and doubt goes to pessimism, whereas faith goes to optimism, all of what you were just saying. Then you've got excuses because, well, I would blah, 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 whatever it is. And we all got our own excuseology going at one time or another. Then you got pattern paralysis where you go over the same thing and keep doing it the same way. And Einstein said, if you expect to do something new and keep doing that, you're cuckoo, which means crazy. And then it goes all the way to disconnection is the last one. And, and the other day, um, I forgot to charge up my phone and I went to use it in the morning and it was dead. Well, that the phone was disconnected. I forgot to charge it at night, my fault. But a lot of us, that's why I say you got to read because we get disconnected from our own growth, our own self-awareness, our own self-development. The road to who we can become is always under construction. There's no such thing as retirement. You can retire from what you do physically, but you can't retire on yourself. You need to keep pushing, moving forward, challenging yourself at every level. And, and I am physically probably stronger now than I've ever been because when Chicken Soup was selling 15 million books a year, I can tell you what, I didn't have time to exercise. I didn't think, which is like a tragic mistake. Like you, you wanna, I was being dumbass squared. So it's back to these seven things, right? So you got, and fear, every one of us has have them and we have them at different levels. Like we're with a guy with $8 billion on, online the other day. And he says, I have to ask my wife to go up to the waitress and ask if our table's ready. So all of us have them. You assume that if you've got a lot of money, you won't have them. You assume whatever it is you assume that, 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 that stops stuff. And all of us need, each of us need all of us, Jim Rowan, you say, and all of us need each of us. And we have a, to create a mastermind. And when Jack and I created a mastermind, two at the power of 11, we created a third new mind. So we saw the end from the beginning, which is what you got to do in a project. Like a farmer sees that if he plants a seed, he's going to get a harvest. He's got, but he's got to take care of it all the way through until it's time to harvest. And he's got to have enough man power, woman power, to harvest it and then the marketplace to go sell to. It's the same here. All of us have infinite potential. The soil is ready, everything's ready, but the soil of your mind has to be input with great ideas. And, and my cliche that goes along with the uh, ask thing you said is my cliche is the size of your question determines the size of your result. So people say, well, you're saying you're gonna sell a billion books, isn't that a little pompous, arrogant, and sophomoric? I go, what if I only got half there? Well, I'm half there, so it's not a bad idea. I'm pretty far along, so I think it's pretty cool. It's, you know what? It's, it's so funny. So I, when I started my coaching and training business, um, I, I was a couple of years in, and my, my goal originally was I wanted to empower a million people. That was a goal that Good. I'd set. And um, I, I remember it was a, a Friday morning, and things weren't going the way that I wanted them to. And I remember sitting down one day, and I, and I asked myself, what would I be doing differently today if my goal was to empower a billion people? And instantly I was like, I'll do that, 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 that. And I was like, well, that's the answer because those are what's going to get me where I want to be sooner. Um, a, a good, a good friend of mine's Mo Gordat. I don't know if you know Mo, but he was the, the uh, incredible book called soul for happy and a new book that's just come out. Um, or comes out in September, but he was the, um, the uh, chief business officer at Google X and Google X's whole concept is rather than just improve things a little bit, how can we get a 10x result? And sometimes you have to completely, you have to completely reinvent the model to, to get there and, and do what needs to be done. And, uh, and, and and I completely agree with you. Would would you rather sort of just achieve the lower goal or set the much bigger goal and get halfway there, which is still way further than the, where, where you go in the first place? So. 
I, I love what you just said because it just started clicking for you. When we wrote The One Minute Millionaire, which is two books in one, it's uh, Left Brain, it tells the 24 things you do to become a millionaire in 90 days. The Right Brain is the story of a little woman who you can see the butterflies in there and it's my colors, purple and, and uh, gold or the, and this is a universal symbol of freedom, but I did it with Bob Allen, who's a genius writer. And, and the freedom is you get freedom from the end of the book. If you can see the butterfly, I don't know if I'm yeah. doing this, but yeah. see, yeah. see the butterfly fly off the top of the page. Point is we got a million dollars each before we wrote the book and, and uh, Random House, world's biggest publisher said, hey, you guys, you got to make sure you really sell it. So Bob, and, suddenly you get scared because now you got to sell it. You know, they gave you the money, you got to go do the book. And uh, I said, let's, no, no, let's do it the other way. Let's 10 X. Let's say we got to sell 10 million. Now selling a million looks easy. Yeah. And out of the future, we sold 3.6 million. But what we did, because the book came out uh, October uh, 17, 2001, right after 9 1 1, after the World Trade Center blew up, which is tragic. And I did a whole book on that. But the, the point is, <clears throat> and Bob and I went there, and Jack and I went there, and all that. But um, what we did is we said, let's go to somebody who's got the list. And we went to a guy I'm working with again now, Paul Allen, uh, uh, two decades later, which is mind blower to me. But um, Paul Allen, not Bill Gates, Paul Allen, but Paul Allen, the guy who created Ancestry.com. And it was before uh, spam. So we sent out 3 million emails and said, if you'll buy this book, because Amazon is just starting from, it was from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. And buy this book on this day, Bob will give you $250 worth of electronic stuff. Mark will give you that. So we gave an outrageous benefit of $500 worth of stuff. Well, Amazon comes out. And before that, Jeff Bezos, now the richest guy in the world, probably, uh, said, nobody can sell more books. I'm the world's biggest bookstore. And, and Bob Allen had just written a book called Challenge, which send, send me to any city and I'll give me $100 to buy a million dollars real estate at night and they videotaped him and then send me down on an unemployment line and I'll get everybody a job making over five grand a month or I'll give them five grand for the next month. And he did that. So Bob and I are watching Jeff Bezos cockily, arrogantly and on uh, without humility saying, I'm going to, no one can sell more than I have. I said, Bobby, I don't know if you heard what I heard. He said, I heard it. He's challenging you and I, Mark. We got to go. <laughs> so, so we started out like, the number I remember is like 79,000 at six o'clock, we're at Bob's house. And by 10 o'clock, we're at 750 and it's still going straight up at which time Amazon went and stopped. It, wow. We crushed the system. Two hours later, we get a call from Bezos and he says, okay, you guys, I don't know what the hell you did or how you did this, but you get your ass up here. I'm giving you three tickets. Our partner was uh, uh, Tom Painter and Bob and myself. Um, they had better security there than when we went to the, the uh, Pentagon. And it was amazing. And we told him what we did. The only mistake I made, and I made a lot of mistakes, but we should have brought a video camera. How was I going to know that guy's going to be the richest? <laughs> but, yeah. but here he's saying, okay, you guys, tell me exactly what you did to sell more books than anybody's ever sold before in a shorter time. Well, we said we're going to 10 exit, right? And what you just did is that, is once you go to a billion, you're, the, remember, the size of your question determines the size of your results. So if you ask weak questions like, how do I get a little bit more money? I give you 25 cents. You got a little bit more money, but that is not what you wanted. You yeah. want to be a millionaire, a cent millionaire, a billionaire, whatever you want. Universe doesn't care. If you create the value inside and Napoleon Hill said the quantity of service plus the quality of service with a positive mental attitude equals unlimited compensation. Well, I'm under the spout where all the good things pour out, but I'm not a one-off. There's a lot of us there, but a lot of us can get there. That's, why I love doing a podcast with somebody that like you and I believe in infinite possibilities because God's infinite and you and I are made in the image and likeness of God, Genesis 128. Therefore, you're here to create, you're here to contribute, and you're here to be amazingly charitable, right? And, and it's only by doing all that you can, by serving greatly with love that you can pull it off. I love that. One, one of the questions that I, I thought, and, and, uh, and you actually mentioned it in Ask, which is so true. So a few years ago, I had a, I had a situation um, that, that meant my, my financial situation had swung, considerably, similar to your situation that you mentioned, where I'd gone from sort of one extreme to another in a short period of time. And the, the question was, rather than get out, I think you, in the book, you said something along the lines of, rather than how do I get out of debt, how do I create an abundance or, or to, to that effect? And it, and I, I smiled to myself as I heard it because I was like, 
that is exactly the question I said two, three years ago, whenever it was. And all of a sudden, that shift of focus, asking better quality questions, all of a sudden, things start changing very, very quickly, which takes us nicely into the second part of the book, which is pivoting and making those changes in your relationships, in your health, financially, in business. So what, what are some um, parts of the book that you can share with people around each of those key areas of how they can start making changes by, by using the ask principle? All of us are forced into pivoting now more than ever. I mean, in America, mm. we got 50 million people unemployed or underemployed. In the world, we have over 1 billion, which is one eighth of us, which is way too many. And most people do want to work, do want to contribute, but most people have been forced to do stuff they don't want to do, which is silly because they've never gone back to the question of what do I really want to be? Who do I really want to be? What do I really want to do? What do I really want to have? And I, I love what we're doing here and I love the communication that I do and writing I do. So I'm in my right livelihood, but I want to get everybody else in there. It's not, everybody's not supposed to do what I do. They're supposed to do what they're supposed to. That's why in One Minute Millionaire, I said there's a million ways to make a million or more. And there's one right, easy, perfect, easy, acceptable way to you, for you. Anyhow, so back to the pivoting, it's 1974. I built the Wall Street Racquet Club, Botanica Gardens, Aviaries, Geodesic Domes, Bucky Fuller invented them. And I thought I was supposed to be Bucky Fuller. No, wrong, Durr. And And so I went bankrupt so fast. I asked her one question. I said, what if I go bankrupt? I'm in a library, New York's biggest library at the time in the world, how to go bankrupt by yourself. Because mm. the universe is, it doesn't care what you ask, but if you ask a dumbass squared question like I did, you get a dumbass squared answer. And I go, Meow. my best worst experience. Then I'm for six months, I'm sleeping in front of another guy's room in a sleeping bag. And, and I'm asking, okay, God, third, ask yourself, ask others, ask God, God what, do, what do you want me to do here? And God did the other thing. He said, what do you want to do, Mark? And I said, I want to speak to people that care about things that matter that would make a life transformative difference. Well, miracle number one. Miracle number two, ask others. I go downstairs, I got three roommates. I'm living in a place called Hicksville, Long Island, New York, and it is just what it sounds like. It was, <laughs> we're paying $100 a month rent, so you can see that we were not high, styling and profiling was not where we were at the time. I said, boys, any of you know anyone that's not a Broadway star, a celebrity, a doctor, a lawyer, a famous person that's young that I can relate to, that is speaking. And the guy said, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's my ticket. Take my ticket. This kid, Chip Collins is great. He's a little older than you, but you'll love him. He's talking out in Hopog, Long Island, New York, half hour from where I was. I jump out in the only car the bankruptcy courts and not taking a beat up old Volkswagen. Race my butt out there. This guy, that was a second miracle. The guy gives me a ticket. I mean, there's no way I could know that could happen. I get out there and Chip Collins wows the audience for three hours, Will. At the end of which, third miracle, I walk up and I say, Chip, Teach me how to do what you're doing. He said, look, kid, chance of you making a zero, one in a thousand. You ain't going to make it. Go do some real business. I said, no, no. Let me decide what I'm going to do. I'll buy your lunch. I didn't have much money, but I'll buy him whatever he wants, right? And if I didn't have to eat, I would not eat because I need apprenticeship here. Tell me how to do it. He said, if you'll stay out of the real estate business, I own the five boroughs of New York here. I'll teach you how to do it, but you do it in life insurance. It's a bottomless pit for motivation. I said, oh, okay. Okay. He told me what to do, how to do it. He said, call on 10, one will say yes. Uh, that was like the third miracle. The fourth miracle, I'm, I'm out there, as I said, and they said, man, you're a storyteller. You got to do that book. And we did the book and sold and made $200,000. I just, I thought, oh, I'm in heaven. And then I couldn't stop writing to feel stories. What, you compound good ideas or you compound bad ideas. I've never said that before, but I think it's accurate. And so you're either evolving, which is what my goal is for everyone listening and your goal, I believe or you're involuting and you're going down, you're going to be depressed, despondent. And that's silly. We're in the most opportune, loomingly time ever that we need everybody to be at their highest and best. Would you agree with that? Couldn't agree more. Thank you. Could, Thank couldn't you. Agree Did more. I over answer your question? I'm no, sorry. No, not at all. I, 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 love, I love these answers. And, 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 and obviously your passion, your enthusiasm that, that, that people will be hearing from this is, is amazing. Hearing or watching, depending on where they're, wherever they're at. And I, I think... Um, You've, you, you've, you've kind of touched on the, the part there when you, you talk about sort of evolving and developing. Um, I mean, I, I, I own in here in the UK, obviously we had to change because of COVID, but pre, pre-COVID I owned and still do own something called the Evolve Network, which 
now we've taken online and we're running online and it's great because we've got people from all, all over the world now that, that are part of it but it's about that whole process of evolving like how can we evolve how can we continue to improve take the kaizen approach of continuing never-ending improvement and, and develop that which i suppose comes really nicely into the, the third part of the book which you go into in, in depth around human potential and opening up that 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 potential and that there's something that i say an awful lot which is one of the, the chapters in the book which i i love is you're not a human being you're a human becoming and it is and the question you got to ask yourself like becoming a millionaire is what are you going to become by becoming a millionaire are you going to become a scrooge uh, which is a very good british story or are you going to become unlimited and the other British story that I had to read in high school that helped transform, but you know, it's the best of times and the worst of times. Now, all times are the best of times and worst of times. I came up with this today. It's the best of times if you make them the best of times. I just wrote that cliche today and I thought, wow, that's pretty good because not, not that I'm trying to brag about me, but it's up to the individual, right? The cliche that I, I guess Bob Schuler said, if it is to be, it's up to me. You got to decide that you're going to make it the best. The, the economy is always going to be the economy. Day and night are two pulsating things. That's a law of polarity, right? You got black and white and good and bad. The point is, what are you going to do? Are you going to find more good in your life and spend your time concentrating on that? Because what Peter Demandis says, his research at Singularity University, which I think the world of, 90% of most people's thoughts are negative. What they can't do, what they can't be, what they can't have, which is why we call it the seven roadblocks to achievement. We say, look, read these, look in the mirror, read the stories, see if you see yourself in them and then overcome them, go over, under, or under, through. And let me give you one quick example that I think you'll like. In our country, we've got this great guy that's from South Africa, Elon Musk. As you know, he's an economist up at, I think it was McGill University in Canada, then came to Stanford, wrote down five things he wanted to do. You alluded to the Neuralink, which is his fifth one, right? But he wanted to be in the energy business like I am. We're in different parts of it, but you know, creating and processing it, which he did with solar. And then, you know, he created the, the car that's going to change the world, this EV. But what he happened is he's making 90,000, he's making cars out in California. The governor says, you're shut down. You could lay off those 90,000 people. Elon Musk didn't say, oh, yes, yes, sir. I'm so sorry. I was making cars. Instead, what did he do? He asked himself, how could I keep this company going? So he calls up the head of 3M company and said, <clears throat> You can't make enough respirators to keep people alive and breathing. I have 3D printing. I got 90,000 employees. I got all the metal you'd want. I got the manufacturing machine. I got the robotics, the cobotics. Let me do it and we'll split 50-50. Guy said, hell yes. But when he was doing it, what did he do? Well, he made 90,000 cars, became temporarily the richest guy in the world. Now he's number one, two, or three at any given time. But what else did he do? I said, we compound our ideas when you ask yourself, ask others, ask God. He's very spiritual. He said, holy cow, not only to make the car, but if I was to make the car right, what do I really want? I want a battery as thin as a thumbnail. So we bought a hundred, I think it was a hundred million dollar company, Maxwell. They have graphene batteries. Well, he said, wait a second, that changes everything. How does that change it? Well, now I can have flying cars. I can change the whole airline business. Now I can have Uber, Tesla, all of which comes out in the next by the way, he always says it's the next couple of months. He's late for his goals, but who the hell cares? Yeah. He is leading edge, right? Because I, I teach in my leadership, you're leading edge, cutting edge, dull edge, trailing edge. And most people have never thought about being leading edge. On behalf of Will, and I haven't talked for you before, but I bet you'll agree with me. We're cheering on every viewer to decide in favor of themselves, in favor of God in them to become leading edge. Would you agree with me on that 100%. one? 100%. And, and be like Elon Musk. You can't let the stupid ass government, the stupid ass economy, some stupid ass relative, by the way, that's pretty caustic, say you can or can't do something. There's your opinion of you is what's critical and your, God's opinion of you. Those are the two that matter. I was told you'll never be a best selling author. You're never going to do this. You're, by the way, I can print those all, I can make wallpaper out of all those notes, but I don't care. There, you and I and everybody listening has got to have a Teflon spirit and go, rejection. And, and what I teach is, you know, when somebody rejects you, you just say clean four letter word N E X T next. Yeah. Love it. it it's, it's that, 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 that old saying, you can either be the victim or the victor and, and, and you are not Mark victim Hansen. You're Mark Victor Hansen, right? <laughs> um, 
So uh, you've you've really embodied it in so many different ways. Um, Thank which, you, sir. Which I love. I accept that. So in, in terms of the, the book, we, we've spoken about Ask. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal book that I highly recommend people go away and get. So we'll put the link to it now in the, the, the show notes for everyone to, to go and get. Um, obviously, one of your, your classics, which if people haven't got it, Chicken Soup for the Soul, go and get. And there's hundreds and hundreds of books that people can go and get from you and, and learn more from you. And, and I'm super grateful for our time together today, um, Mark. So thank you so much for coming on the show. But for people that want to go and find out more about you and find more, where can they go and connect with you and, and uh, all that good stuff? Yeah, if they go to markvictoranson.com, we give them a free book and free tapes. And if you want to write a book, we've done a new book now called uh, You Have a Book in You. And we've got a hansoninstitute.com. And uh, we teach everyone, because I think everyone should write a book. Because that, back to you're a human becoming to become, once you start writing, you find out who you are and what your full potential is. And you go, oh, this is like way cool. I can do this. And everybody can. And today we got all the technology to teach it in a multiplicity of ways, or we'll even ghost it with you. So we're just we're just here to source and serve people because I, I want everybody to have fun in their life and have a fulfilled, full thrilled life. Absolutely. Well, look guys, make sure you go and get the book. Um, ask the bridge um, from your dreams to your destiny. Mark and his wonderful wife Crystal um, and to go and check that out thank, thank you so much again Mark for, for coming and, and joining me on the show we'd love to have you on the, the show again very soon and for everyone else who's been listening until next time make it happen thank you for listening to this episode of the make it happen with Will Polston podcast make sure you join Will's free Facebook group the make it happen community Please support the show by subscribing on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Share this episode with at least one friend you think would benefit from it and give Will a five-star review wherever you download your podcasts. Until next time, make it happen.